Okay, so I am here today live with Stefan Smolders from Expandy.io. Stefan, thank you so much for joining me for a chat. Uh, could you introduce yourself and tell us a bit about who you are and what you do? Yeah, for, for, first and foremost, uh, Peter, yeah, very, very happy and thanks for, for having me in your great and fantastic uh, Facebook group. I already saw a couple of episodes which um, yeah, I hopefully can come close to provide some additional value. My name is Stefan, I'm from the Netherlands. I am a bootstrapped uh, SaaS founder and my journey with Expandi looks like an overnight success, but uh, uh, it took me a lot of years to, to, to build a successful SaaS company as the, the first ones they failed and uh, they did not took off really, really well. And my Expandi project is uh, a sales automation uh, software focused on LinkedIn outreach. Okay, sales automation software for LinkedIn outreach. Um, and yeah, and, and Stefan, can you tell me a bit about where you are with this business? Um, where are you with ARR at the moment? Yeah, we launched it uh, end of 2019, so just before COVID uh, kicked, uh, kicked in. It was yeah, quite a challenging time, so I, yeah, I think, for everybody, right? But uh, due to the fact that we are an online business, we, we, we could take off really well. And uh, as of today, we are uh, around seven and a half million in AR. Great, seven and a half million AR. And that's boot completely bootstrapped? Correct, yeah. Strap business. Do you have any co-founders? Yes, I have two co-founders and we uh, divided our, our, our shares uh, equally. Okay, equal yeah. shares. There's three co-founders. And um, how are your roles split between the co-founders? To me, uh, I, I see you as a, a marketer, a uh, kind, of, kind of marketer. Is that is that your predominant role? And how, what are the other two profiles? Yeah, the, my uh, other co-founder, it's it's Glenn. It's sort of the technical magician, and 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 he, he took since day one, yeah, actually care for the development and 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 the technical side. And our third co-founder, Art, he's a bit more in the background. He try to be the middleman between me and Glenn so that we not fight that much. That was, that was our, our original plan. And now he's a bit of a more into the, 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 the HR uh, right. direction. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, that makes sense as you expand and grow the team uh, based on your growth. So your growth has been really impressive. So it's been say three to four years that you've been running this business. It sounds like it was around eight years in the making as you were, Exactly. On our journey, uh, starting businesses, having a few learnings and some failures in there. Um, what would you say has been the, the key driver uh, that has made the impact with expanding, that made it a success in comparison to the, the other ventures you, you attempted before? Um, I, yeah, maybe you need to take a step back so that I can give a bit of a more background uh, 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 because I started uh, very enthusiastic in the early days when I was in my mid-20s with an idea. It was in the healthcare. We should build an app and we raised 500k VC money and burned everything through it before we launched the product. And I think that woke me up. Um, and it was something I remembered as I definitely want this never to be happening again, as I really felt unlucky and uncomfortable about sort of the mistake I made or, or, or that failure. And it, it took me a while to recover mentally from, from, from that first and foremost. And after a while, I, uh, as a marketer, I have a marketing background. I was sort of always triggered about website visitors, why they not convert. And everybody is, is going with a special reason from Google to a website and only two or 3% fill in a form. They buy something or they apply for, for, for a demo call or so. So for me, it was quite hard and interesting to see why Google is not presenting these people and give them faces, these anonymous visitors. So I started with the idea of, 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 of an IP tracking software. Uh, long story short, we did that. We launched that on a local market. It was quite competitive to Albacross Lead Forensics Lead Feeder. And after a while, we found out it was more nice to have software. We pushed it as a side hustle with traditional marketing towards a thousand subscriptions. But at the end of the day, everybody wanted to get results out of these identifications. And they actually wanted to have appointments. So 
I was a bit disappointed that our software was not resol resolving the, 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 the purpose they aim for. So I stepped on LinkedIn because that triggered me to find ways to do acquisition on a much more modern way. And that was actually the main reason. So I proved with my own profile and I never leveraged it six years ago for any commercial purposes before, but I found and pivoted and learned by, by the trying and doing. And after a couple of months, it became my number one lead channel. So I started to document everything I did, the playbooks, how I optimized my profile, how I found audiences and how I engaged with them to get reactions and replies. And that became quite successful. So I thought, let's help some complaining customers from my IP tracking software to do exactly the same for them. And after managing five customers, I was uh, it, it was working perfectly fine, but I could not scale that sort of starting done for you agency as I had two left hands, one Excel sheet and I was running totally out of time. So I thought, let's be clever and try to search for some automations, which can at least automate these repetitive tasks with connection requests. And at that time point, five years ago, I stepped into a new world, which called LinkedIn automation. I had no clue what it was at that time point. Not, it, it's not illegal, not forbidden by law, but I was not even aware that LinkedIn was especially there, not that amused with it. So um, it was all new for me and I found a bunch of tools. 90% of them were all Chrome extended, perfectly fine with intelligent features for single users who just and simply want to run run automation. Uh, but from agency perspective, if I want to manage five or 10 customers, I want to run A-B tests, and I want to run multiple campaigns. I need to set up VPNs for every action I wanted to do. And as soon as my wife was calling me for dinner at 6 p.m., I needed to close 40 browser sessions and I needed to restart everything again. So that was a big hurdle and it was really a huge mess. And that um, frustrated me so much for the purposes I wanted to leverage it that I shared everything out of frustration with Glenn. My current co-founder and he say, let's just build the thing ourselves. We make it cloud-based, quite intelligent with dedicated IPs per user account. We can run hundreds of accounts in one admin and no worries, we don't need to close it. And by the way, we will build in all features you need as an agency owner to manage uh, and more accounts. So that was a bit of the start of, of, uh, of Expandi. And uh, it took us a couple of months. It was a bit of more challenging as we are not leveraging an API on LinkedIn to, 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 to access the platform and LinkedIn start to change things. They find uh, all these tools. So um, yeah, that, 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 that's a bit of how we came to our ID uh, uh, from Expandia and, and, and how we were able to, to, uh, to build it. Why we really took off, I stepped in um in an already oversaturated market as we all know there were a bunch of tools and, and most of them were quite spammy and i saw three simple things obviously happening in this sort of a niche where we uh, operating and i just took advantage of these three things it's quite simple because everybody's asking me how did you get to seven or eight million in such a short of time period bootstrap without funding and I think it's it's three things. At the time that we started, there was a huge buzz on LinkedIn automation. On the left side, everybody wanted to leverage these tools, especially all our US friends, because they could do faster business. It, it saved them a lot of time. It was fully automated. And on the other hand, nobody wanted to get in problems with LinkedIn or losing their profile. And at some point before we started and launched our product, I think uh, LinkedIn Helper and DuckSoup, they got catched. And I think in reality, a handful of profiles maybe lost access to the platform, but there was a bus that was so big that it looked like the half of the world was losing their LinkedIn profile. So at that time point, I really understood safety is the most important thing in this business model. So I thought if we launch the product, no matter what, we will present ourselves as real safest tool out there. And then uh, just after launching, I was uh, 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 praying and begging, 
that it did not fall apart the first couple of months, but I kept screaming, we are the world's safest tool, we are the safest tool. And at some point, people start believing it. And of course, we did a lot of things to, to make it safe and build an intelligent architecture. And secondly, as a former agency owner and user of such third-party apps, it was quite challenging for me to get in touch with all these providers. Because let's be honest, if I'm a single user, I put in my credit card, they charge 99 bucks. And the only requirement I have is that it needs to work. If I'm an agency owner, I manage 50 or 100 of accounts, then I actually want to know what direction LinkedIn is going. Can I give you a feedback to improve your product so that I can level up my results for my customers and so on and so forth. But all these providers, these founders of these providers, they were operating in a gray mode. They were hiding themselves for LinkedIn, maybe scared that Bill Gates should come one day, boom, and spank all of them and crack their tools down. So I thought if I want to do things differently and stand out of the crowd, I need to manage this company like it's just a normal company. Let's put myself as face of the brand on expanded that people see it's a real company. These guys are not hiding themselves. Everything is safe, it's trustful. So that's what I did. I run more than 700 demos in the first four months after launching Expanded. Um, so I think that 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 made the difference. And the last, I think, obvious thing we did is that it was at that time point, if you visited competitors' websites, they were just pronouncing 10x results, we 10x your results, we 10x this. And nobody was educating people on how to get these 10x results with what playbooks, what strategies. So we started to use our own expanded tool to design the best out of the box strategies. And uh, the best performing ones, we took them apart. We created playbooks out of it with the how, the why, how you connect the dots, which messages you use, which targeting, how you need to scrape, uh, the proofs, the results from all the appointments, the screenshots from the Zoom conversations. And these ones, we started heavily to distribute it among all the communities, the Facebook groups where the growth hackers were, the growth marketers, the LinkedIn posts where we use the pods to create a lot of engagement and manual traction. Uh, and then we followed up manually uh, in all these Facebook groups with the DMs to send the link. We put a small retargeting on it and that we leveraged actually inbound marketing by creating uh, quite successful playbooks. And they were all working because we tested out all of them ourselves, actually. Fantastic. Hey, Stefan, that was such an awesome overview. I feel like I really understand what made the big differences is that those three things. Also, the time and effort you put in, the, the pivot you made in the business. So um, I feel like I didn't really have to ask you anymore. And, and you're, you've been really generous in sharing all of that knowledge and your experience there. Hey, thanks so much for joining uh, and talking with me today. Um, how can people follow you and check out Xpandy if, they, if they're looking for a, a LinkedIn automation outreach tool? Yeah, 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 I'm quite active on, on, on Twitter and LinkedIn. I, I try to, to, to build uh, my company in, in, in the public and share all the lessons learned uh, 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 from me as a, as a, as a founder. Um, so just fill my name, Stefan Smulders, on Twitter or in LinkedIn. And for the ones who want to learn more about how to approach LinkedIn, I don't want to sell anything, but I should recommend to just learn more about one of these practical playbooks which you can find on our blog to see if this could be something that resonates with, with, uh, 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 with your audience interests. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's great. Uh, so go and check out Expandy and you can follow Stefan on LinkedIn and Twitter. Thanks so much for joining me. I've really enjoyed our chat, Stefan, and I'll see you around. Likewise.